Good morning, Ripple family, and welcome back, and Happy New Year to everybody. I know that I actually missed you guys, and I missed being at school, and I hope that you guys felt the same way. How about you, Mr. Peters? Absolutely. Glad to be back. I want to see these smiling faces each and every day. Dr. Pe Dr. Peters. Dr. Fitzpatrick? I'm excited, too. Happy to be back. Excited for the new year. Awesome. And with all New Year's, we have New Year's resolutions so that we can create goals, so that we can start strong with some new habits. And what we're going to do today is we're going to help you with some of that. Today is going to be Schedule C day. That means that it's not odd and it's not even. You're going to see all of your classes today. You're going to start the morning off with a video with the three of us talking to you about our expectations. And then at the end of the day, you're going to end the day with a short video of the three of us closing out the school day. In order to help you interact with our video this morning, each of you should have one of these bright yellow cardstock pieces of paper. It says A, B, C on the side. It also has up here at the top the ABCs of being a Ripple Scholar for second semester. And it asks that you put your name and it asks that you put your first period teacher's name. So take a minute and please do that right now. All right. Let's take a look at the first section, which is section A. School is very simple. It's about ABCs. So if you can remember the ABCs of what we're going to be talking to you about for being a Ripple Scholar, you are going to be very, very successful. So we're going to start with the letter A. A stands for attendance. It is so important for you to be in school in order to learn, and it is so important that you're on time, and it is so important that you are on time for each and every class throughout the day. And I know we worked on that first semester, and we kind of helped you by putting an incentive in there. If you didn't make it to class, you had a detention. After school. And I think we're going to continue with that. So let's take a look here with our graphic organizer. It says A stands for attendance. In the second bubble, you should put you need to be in school to learn. So you're going to write in there, in school. I have to be in school in order to learn. And then the next two important parts are you need to be on time to school. Class actually starts at 9.45 every single day. And then the second bubble is you need to be on time for each and every class. So I want you to double check right now and make sure that you have the A for the ABCs of being a Ripple Scholar complete. Attendance, you must be in school to learn, you must be on time to school, and then you must be on time for your classes. Now I'm going to have you take 30 seconds and I want you to write in the far right hand corner what it is that you are going to do to be an ABC Ripple Scholar this second semester. So I need you to write in there. What we know is that when we write our thoughts down, we make them our own and then we can act accordingly. So take just a minute and write down what you're going to do as it relates to attendance. All right, now we're going to go to the B of the ABCs, and B stands for? Behavior. Behavior. All right, so we went from A, and now we're at B. Go ahead, Mr. Peters. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to talk about behavior. And one of the first things, you go to the next column, right down the middle, and the top bubble, we're going to talk about using our wave expectations. So in that top bubble, use wave expectations in class. If you go over to the next bubble, we're going to talk about these wave expectations, which are the W, we show respect. That's respect to your fellow classmates. That's respect to your teachers. That's respect to yourself, uh, doing what you're supposed to do. Next, we have act responsibly. And that's part of attendance, getting to class on time, having the right supplies, uh, doing your schoolwork, listening to the teacher. All of that is acting responsibly. Next, we have value differences. This is very important. 
if we were all the same, life would be kind of boring. 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 I don't want to be like Dr. Fitz. She likes triathletes. She loves triathletes. <laughs> so we have to value everybody's differences, okay? We're not all alike, but we have to respect each other and uh, get along with each other. And last, excel in academics. Mm -hmm. That's very important. And that goes to the next section that we're going to talk about a little bit later in our C's. All right, so we want to do our best in our academics. So that covers our using our wave expectations in class. So just to make sure that we're on the right target here, for B, it stands for behavior, and then we're talking about our wave expectations, and then, Mr. Peters, you just went through each of the wave expectations there. Right. And Perfect. The bubble's a little small, so you might have to move over a little bit. Okay. Make room. Be creative. Right. Second bubble. Second bubble, of course, is your conduct on campus. Conduct on campus. That should go right here in the second bubble. Um, we are going to talk, we're talking about dress code. First thing in the morning, you get dressed, you look in the mirror, am I in dress code? Okay, we, we talked about jackets and sweatshirts a lot at the beginning, uh, throughout the first semester, so we have to really work on that. Walking in the hallways, not running. Making sure you have passes. If you leave the class, you should have a pass. Um, don't say, oh, my teacher let me out of class. No, the teachers know that they're supposed to give you a pass when leaving the classroom. Also, your voice is in the hallway. There's a lot of screaming. Also, when you're banging on the classroom doors, it just takes a little knock, no pounding. You're going to disrupt the learning environment of others. So we have to take care of our conduct on campus by following dress code, walking and making sure we have passes, and lowering your voices and knocking uh, quietly on the classroom doors. Okay, the only other thing that I'd like to add to that, Mr. Peters, is at this stage, second semester, everybody knows what the dress code is supposed to be. When you arrive on campus, do not tell your teacher that Mrs. Edward, Mr. Peters, or Dr. Fitzpatrick Ooh, said that what you have on is okay, because it's not. You know what the dress code is, and the expectation is that you dress accordingly. If you do not have clothes, we have clothes for you to change into. If we have a dress code issue, Mrs. McNeil is actually going to highlight the part of the dress code that you are in, um, have an infraction in, and is actually going to send that home. So, boys and girls, you know better, so do better. Okay. Thank you. That's a very good point. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Peters. Also, I'm valuing our differences. Yes, you are. Behavior, the last bubble. And this is the biggest phrase or statement or motto that Mrs. Edward always talks about. Your language and actions of employment. So important that you come to school every day with that in mind. That means... The things that come out of your mouth, how you speak to the adults, how do you speak to your peers. You have to be like you were at work, professional. I can't say some things that sometimes that are on my mind at work. That's just, I would not have a job. We, all, we, we wouldn't be employed. That's also keeping your hands and feet to yourself. I see a lot of pushing in the hallway, or students will say, well, we were just playing, Mr. Peters. That doesn't, that doesn't work. Little, little actions start fights and other things on campus guys so you got to keep your hands and feet to yourself always remember language and actions of employment with your words and your physical actions students you're in school to learn and that is your job thank you very much mr peters no. okay so we're going to take 30 seconds now students and on the far right hand corner we want you to write in there what you are going to do in order to be an abc ripple scholar as it relates to behavior All right, and now we get to the final part of the ABCs. We're at the C part, Dr. Fitzpatrick. This is talk exciting. to us about the C. All right, so for C's, what we're going to talk about is, and it's written right here, the word credits. And this is one of those things that you've probably heard us talking to you about, about the necessity to have a certain amount of credits for you to get to high school. 
And I know what happens is sometimes we're in sixth grade and even seventh grade and maybe didn't pass a class, say language arts, and we go to the next grade level and we think, it didn't affect me. But when you hit eighth grade, if you do not have 12 credits, we cannot move you to the high school. So in this first bubble, you want to write, I need 12 credits for high school. So there's 12 credits needed to go to the high school. And you have to have these done by eighth grade. And then in the next bubble, you're going to write what those 12 credits are. You need three in math, language arts, which you could put ELA, science, and social studies. So three of those in each gives you 12 credits, and that's what you need. So reminder, you need 12 credits to move to the high school. So 12 credits needed for high school. And you need three credits in math, ELA, science, and social studies. Making sure to stay on and get our 12 credits, we've got to have, in our next bubble, we're going to talk about we call stick with itness, or maybe the word, we've talked about the word grit, or the power of yet. Hmm. Here, stick with itness. This means when we're frustrated with something, we keep trying and we stick with it until we get it accomplished. This can go for attendance, behavior, and of course for your credits. If you are struggling, one of the things you could do for stick with itness, which you could write in this next bubble, is if you're struggling, you're not doing well on tests, talk to your teacher. Can I redo the assignment for earn a higher grade? Can I relearn it and retest? So think about asking to redo an assignment or retesting, and there's also tutoring. Lots of teachers offer tutoring after school to help with assignments, and then we have our Century 21 where you could get a, um, help from, from our teachers there as well. So here, stick with itness and having grit or the power of yet, and redoing our tests, redoing assignments, or maybe signing up for tutoring. And then in our last bubble, this talks about being a self-advocate. And what that means is you're going to advocate for yourself. And advocating for yourself means asking for help and speaking up and saying, I need help. Or I don't understand. I know some students struggle. Some, one of, sometimes I hear from students, well, I don't want to raise my hand because I'm embarrassed because I think everybody understands it and I don't. Write your teacher a note on your paper. Go talk to them privately. Send them an email. Let them know. And then you don't have to worry about people knowing, and the teacher can talk to you privately. So self-advocate is what we're going to put here. And in our last uh, bubble, we're going to talk about ways we can self-advocate. We can always do our personal best. And what our personal best is, what we're, are we doing the best that we can? So if I don't do that great on a test, I have to ask myself, did I do my personal best? Did I study? Did I review it? Is studying cramming it 10 minutes before the test, or did I really review the material a little bit every day? Am I using my Cornell notes? Ask questions when you don't understand, and of course, use your Avid Binder. Mm -hmm. If you put everything in your Avid Binder, one, I hear sometimes students say, I turned my assignment in, my teacher lost it. Well, if your teacher graded it and gave it back to you and you put it in your Avid Binder, You've got it to show them, look, I did turn it in. I turned it on time. You grade it. You must have made a mistake. So using your Avid Binder, staying organized, keeping your notes in there. And these are all things you can do to make sure you get your 12 credits mm -hmm. so you can go to the high school. Okay, awesome. So students, take about 30 seconds and write in the, the final column what it is that you're going to do as it relates to credits in order for you to be a Ripple Scholar. Okay, students, today you're going to go through periods 1 through 10. You're going to be receiving a new schedule. So we're going to give you five minutes to pass at the bell so that you can find your first class uh, in case it's a new one. It might not be a new one. 
If you have any questions about your schedules, please speak to one of us in the lunchroom, but know that we went over very thoroughly the schedules based on need and academic uh, strengths and areas for improvement. There are going to be some changes where we're going to be dividing some classes up. You might have two teachers. You might spend some time with one teacher one week and another teacher another week. And know that we will be in the classroom to explain that to you today. The other thing that I'd like for you to know is that we are going to come around and we are going to be asking, not just today, but periodically throughout the semester, to look at your ABCs of being a Ripple Scholar. This has been hole punched and we want you to put it on the top part of the Avid Binder so that when you open your Avid Binder up every day, this is what you see, a reminder of what it is you're supposed to be doing in school. Now these are all of the school-wide expectations for the ABCs of being a Ripple Scholar. Today, each of your teachers in each of their periods are going to talk to you about what their expectations are in their classroom. It might be exactly what it was first semester, but with the New Year's and New Year's resolutions, it's time to just be renewed and refreshed and come up with some stick with itness goals so that you can do your personal best. Teachers and students, at the end of the day today, we are going to come on with a quick 10 minute wrap up video. So please make sure by the time you get to period 10 that you have that ready when we make the announcement. Students, we're very excited to have you back. I missed you guys and cannot wait to see you in the hallways, in the classrooms, and in the cafeteria. Have a great day, and remember to ride the wave and don't fall off.